Let's uh, talk markets as we get ready for the opening bell on Wall Street. Uh, about a half an hour, 35 minutes uh, from now. Uh, Joe Mazzola is Director of Trading and Education for Charles Schwab. I want to talk to him about the retail customer, or the, or the retail investor these days. And what are you seeing, Joe, in terms of what's happening out there, um, in sure. terms of what folks are buying or selling? Yeah, so uh, we release our stacks report, the uh, Schwab Trading Activity Index, on a monthly basis. We saw a pretty hefty bump, uh, about 8%, up to 5165 from 47.65 in February, meaning this investor confidence is really starting to pick up. We definitely saw that in March. That's our fifth straight month of increases. And it takes us back uh, to levels that we haven't seen since May of 22. So, you know, a nice bump in the month. Uh, we saw, you know, buying kind of mostly centered in IT. And uh, you would definitely see that in NVIDIA, Apple, and then, uh, you know, Tesla coming in in, uh, in terms of um, discretionaries. But, you know, those were, the, those were really the three buys that we saw across those sectors. Uh, we've been trying to make sense this morning, and I don't know if you have any thoughts on it. Bitcoin up at $72,000. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, it's a hedge on what the Fed's going to do. Now it looks like the Fed's actually uh, not going to be lowering interest rates. Then others say it's actually uh, a great sort of indicator of, of speculation and liquidity in the marketplace. Yeah, so let me give you uh, some stats that we saw from March, specifically uh, around maybe uh, whether it's Bitcoin or some ancillary plays. If you look at our biggest sale, which which I find interesting, it was Coinbase. Uh, so even though you saw Bitcoin rally as much as it did, and you know Coinbase rallied at what fifty percent basically year to date, we did see investors trim into some of that strength. We also saw some of the ancillary plays around uh, Block, uh, and then, you know, FinTech as well. So, so PayPal was uh, one of the bigger sellers as well. You know, in terms of whether or not that shows uh, investor enthusiasm or uh, I, I think, uh, you know, FOMO is some of the term that gets thrown around uh, from, you know, from time to time. I think what it shows is that, you know, investors are looking for other avenues, uh, you know, to, to find some upside bias. Right. Um, it's something that, you know, when when I see that, it it does send, tend to send up a little bit of a of a red flag. I, I think that, you know, one of the things that's interesting is even though we saw that eight percent increase, we're still kind of below those uh, those meme stock levels of uh, seventy five or so in the stack. So yes, we did see a big bump, but we're not seeing the leverage plays right. at least at uh, Charles Schwab that we've seen in the past. Joe, I don't know if you saw David Einhorn was on our air last week with Scott Wapner, and he made a very important point. It's a point that actually. Uh, Seth Klarman from Baupost and a number of others have made over the years, which is that really the rise of index funds has, in his mind, perverted the actual investing process, which is to say that so much of the markets are being moved by indexes unto themselves that mm -hmm. there's no true price discovery. And I'm so curious, as somebody who runs uh, a firm like yours, Charles Schwab, what you think about that. Well, I mean, look, I think for the average investor, you know, indexing makes sense just because of the amount of, uh, you know, just just the 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 amount of kind of study that has to go into finding stocks. Now, I will say this. We provide an incredible amount of education, uh, an incredible amount of opportunity for our, our investors to do that study, um, you know, whether it's through. Uh, what we do is called Schwab Coaching. Those are those are uh, webcasts that we do on a daily basis, right. 35 hours a week, everything that we have on the website. Now, does it skew the values? I think what, what might skew it to a certain extent is maybe the market cap and the weight of some of the big names that, you know, at this point represent 25% of the S&P 500 in terms of the MAG7. That might skew it. Uh, but I think for the average investor, indexing still makes some, still makes some sense. But, but do, you th do you think that it's changed the dynamic, though, meaning that there's not the true price discovery so that even these individual investors who are, who are buying and selling, it's in, such, it's in such small proportion to the indexes that it doesn't make a difference? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I get that point. Uh, but what, you know, from what we see, we still look at, it at, the, at the equity level. Like when I look at the stacks, we're not looking at specific indexes. We're looking at what they're doing with the individual right. equities. And what we see at that point is we do see discernment. You know, we see trimming into strength. We see buying into weakness. I said, too, you know, two of the names that were right. bought the most heavily in the last uh, period were Apple and Tesla. So they were buying dips. So, you know, they were looking at the individual equity level as opposed to just looking at uh, buying at the index.